I'm here with Joe Rotella, and Joe has brought these amazing and beautiful wind chimes that you can see, which are actually made from wine bottles, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So this is a project we're going to do in steps, and the first step is cutting the bottles. Right. Now, I'm going to put gloves on just for safety. You can use a wine bottle if you drink wine, you know, and be sure to clear the label off, get the bottle really clean. I buy new bottles. That way I don't have to mess with taking those labels off. And I should point out, you have glasses on, and I have safety glasses of my own, because whenever we're cutting glass, we just absolutely. want to be careful. So. What we want to do is score the glass. What you're really doing is making micro fractures all the way around in a line. And you want to make sure the blade of the scoring tool is absolutely perpendicular to the surface of the glass. Um, here, I can adjust this. I could do a, we could make a wine chain out of a five gallon bottle if we wanted, right? If Shorter, really longer. really a big party. So I'm going to hold this. And one of the mistakes I see people make is they really lean into it. If you lean into it as you turn, you're going to push the scoring tool down. And rather than meeting at the other end, you're going to kind of spiral. Oh. Do you know what I mean? So I'm trying not to push down. I'm just pushing against the bottle. And we're going to hear this cut. Ready? Yep. I hear like a scratching noise. And that's just the right sound. When it meets on the other side, we're going to hear a crunching. If you crunch, it's time to stop. It means you've met. So you don't actually have to look at the line that it's scoring. You just have to listen, listen. for the noise. Here it goes. There, we had a little crunch. Let's see now okay. if we score. So see that score line? Yep. So what I'm going to do, glass will break. Many people think it's actually a crystal. It's not. It's a rigid liquid. So it's liquid at hot temperatures. It's solid at cold temperatures. We're used to just holding it when it's solid, right? What we want to do is put stress on that score line evenly all the way around. So we're going so to do I'm that. So I was going to say, you've put some just rubber bands around from there. From my broccoli. Okay, well, a way to upcycle. <laughs> it's a good idea. So you're going to drizzle the hot water okay, right so on I that score line. Okay, so I have a line. kettle of boiling water here. And as you drizzle on the line, the bands are there just to try to keep the water somewhat focused. Okay, so that it's only hitting. going on a small portion of the bottle. So you're rotating, I see that, with the drizzle. Now let's switch to the cold okay, water. Okay, so now over here I have water that has ice in it, so it's freezing cold. So and the contrast, oh, I even managed to throw an ice cube at you. So I assume I it's the it. contrast, right, of the hot the and hot the cold. And cold. And at home I would just do this in a sink with running water, but here, Ice water is because this water is so hot. Let's see what we have. Okay. I think I heard it. <gasps> oh my gosh. That, that, <laughs> that was, was super it. magical. I, That's it. I didn't even, so it doesn't actually like fall off. You have no, to sort of no. pull it off. So now we just want a smooth edge. This is a really sharp edge. So we're going to wet sand it. I just have some sandpaper that's down in the water. So you don't need like special sandpaper or anything like that? Nope. Now, here's a weird question, but you're obviously using what looks to me like a dish that you would bake in. So after this, I assume it has little bits of glass in it and you don't want to use it for food? I don't use it for food. I just use it, actually I use it when I need to soak paper for collage mm -hmm. or, this is like a standard thing in my, in my studio. So we're all done. We could then take this and kind of go around the edge. This would work great if you wanted to cut at the top part and make a drinking glass. And I was going to say, the wet sanding is right is to keep the little glass bits from being in the air. Well, and it, it's a lubricant, actually. So it's helping to lubricate the whole smoothing process. Super cool. So once that's smooth and it looks great, we're going to go ahead and make the wood part of the wood chime, right? Absolutely. Awesome. That's next. Well, we've got our wood shop all set up, and Joe is here to show us the next step of the wood chime. Absolutely. So the first thing we're going to do is make the paddle, and I'm using a table saw to do that. Whenever you cut wood, you want to pay attention to the grain, and we're going to cut a piece this way. That's with the grain. That's uh, called a rip cut. So this is a rip fence. I've already adjusted the blade so it's just slightly higher than the piece of wood, and we've connected it to a vacuum so all the sawdust is going to go away. And then I'm going to put on my safety glasses, Absolutely. and you already safety have first. glasses I have glasses. On. On. So let's go ahead and rip this piece. Let's do it. Perfect. 
So now I want to cut it about three and a half inches this way. Okay. That's across the grain. That's called right. a cross cut. So whenever you're going to do a cross cut, we don't want to use this guide at all. We Why? want to get this out of the way. This, if you are rip cutting, you're with the grain, mm -hmm. everything's fine. When you cross cut, if there's pressure against this side, it could kick back. Ah. So I'm going to just mark three and a half inches. Now this is, you know, it's a wind chime, so this doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to use a pusher here. And so what's a, the pusher, I assume, is to keep your fingers It's just out? helping to guide this wood okay. straight. And I'm going to line it up with the edge of my blade. And I'm pretty much ready to go. So we're going to fire it up again. And there's the panel for our wind chime. Fantastic. So next we need to work on the clapper part. And what's cool is it's a wagon wheel and a train whistle. Oh, I thought you had gotten like wooden mushrooms or something. <laughs> That's what they looked like to me. Now we're gonna have to put a big screw eye inside the top of this whistle. And so we need to drill a pilot hole. So I'm gonna use the drill press for that. And I'm happy just guiding it with my hand, but I don't wanna go so far deep. So I'm gonna just set the guide, fire it up. And there's our pilot hole. So we can do the other side too. I'm just gonna guide it well, again with Well, you know what I like hand. so much about this is I was thinking about how often I go to the craft store and I'm looking at like the little wooden objects and toys and I keep thinking, oh, I have to cu cut a hole in this or I need to buy something that already has a hole drilled in it. But this makes it so that you can just do it yourself. Absolutely. So now you called it a pilot hole, and the reason that it's called a pilot hole is because... It's just to get the screw started, and we don't want to drill it so big that the screw is loose or so, so long. So it's the same so idea as when you're screwing into your wall, you know, right, and you create, you start the hole, but you don't actually want to go all the way in. Absolutely. Okay. Now it's up to you how to decorate it. We did a napkin collage on the bottom and just paint on the top. A little tip for napkin collage, to separate the napkin, just put tape on the front and back and pull. So when you said napkin collage, you, you literally meant like a, a pretty paper napkin. That's this all it is. This is literally just a napkin. And why are you separating the two parts? Because you only want to work with the topmost layer of the napkin. Otherwise, the napkin could even separate. And most napkins in the US here are three or four ply, which means layer. This was only two layers. So I just peeled off the bottom. All that's left is this very little thin piece on top. And I'm just going to lay it on here. So you're just using like a white glue of some kind to go ahead and decoupage. You're putting it both under and on top, and that's going to go ahead and adhere the napkin so that it really is on that wood so that this wind chime could go outside. Absolutely. And I just trim it Ooh. when it's dry. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we look at the one behind you that's already done and absolutely gorgeous. Will you just take us through the quick assembly of it? So we have a length of chain. I'm going to do about a three inch length and then a five inch length, but you can adjust the clapper any height you'd like. We're gonna screw in a little screw eye at the top of the paddle, a big screw eye at the bottom of the whistle, a big screw eye at the top once you put the wheel on, and that actually holds the wheel. The wheel's not glued or anything. Chain up to a key ring, that prevents the chain from going further up the bottle, and then as long as you'd like. So easy, and you can change it out with your particular colors, your mood, your designs, whatever you like. Absolutely, and all that's left is to etch the glass. Super easy project. I love it, Joe. Thanks so much. Thank you.